Joining us, Wedbush Equity Research Managing Director uh, Dan Ives and TechCrunch uh, Editor in Chief Connie Loizos. Great to have you both here with us, Connie. So now the, we're on a pause now in this drama. At least, is OpenAI worth? More because Microsoft likely has more control now or less because customers need to diversify. What's what's the buzz out there? I think the buzz is that it is worth more because there are sort of fewer encumbrances in place. And and boy, John, I mean, this is a great, it's a great day for Microsoft. I mean, just to have this settled, Microsoft was going to win here either way, whether OpenAI went, you know, Sam and Greg went into to Microsoft or whether they went back to uh, OpenAI. But it's a very good day for investors outside of Microsoft and its employees because it's sort of like that movie, It's a Wonderful Life, where the protagonist gets a glimpse into what life would be like if he didn't exist. <laughs> I think investors and employees got a glimpse into what life would be like at OpenAI if Sam left. And it meant that their equity would probably have been worth zero. So those are the biggest beneficiaries of this move. And so, Dan, this is an interesting setup to next week when AWS, the, the biggest name in cloud, has reinvent and is going to want to prove that they've got the AI chops as well. Alphabet's had a big run based on saying, hey, don't count us out in the AI this year. What's the most important thing to you that happened this week? Look, the golden child, Altman, is ultimately really in Microsoft's hands. And I think the way they played this was a poker move for the ages for Nadella. And I think as it plays out, you had the little kids playing checkers at the kids' table in terms of this, the open AI board and then the the master chess master came in here and i think right now it's microsoft just that much more of a flex the muscles on ai what well, you want to see from jassy and aws okay what do you bring it show us the technology how could i have confidence from a share perspective that you're not going to be potentially the third player behind microsoft behind google this is an arms race playing out. And right now, Microsoft and their popping champagne in Redmond because of the way Nadella played this out. Yeah, and now you see it in the stock. It's trading at all-time highs again this week. Connie, I I'm curious, though. I mean, this has been framed, at least within the media, as sort of a profits versus caution story that's been unfolding at, at OpenAI, where, the where this new capability and these new applications are concerned. You've got this weird hybrid nonprofit, for-profit structure at OpenAI as well. Is that going to change now? I it sounds like the uh, nonprofit board is going to change. I mean, the, obviously, the, the board members are, are changing as we speak. There's three that have been solved. This is an ongoing process. You know, I think a really interesting piece of this um, equation that hasn't been covered, and I've reached out to Sam today, I've reached out to OpenAI investors to find out, is a capped structure, a, pro a capped profit structure that Sam instituted in 2019. The idea here was to cap investors' profits at 100 times their original investor investment, because he suggested that if OpenAI could get to uh, so-called artificial generalized intelligence, which is this sort of more sophisticated AI that we seem to be moving toward quickly, that it could be so powerful and so lucrative that he wanted these investors not to sort of hold all of the value in the world. In fact, he spoke at one of my events uh, for Strictly VC, which is now a subsidiary of TechCrunch, and he said that if OpenAI manages to crack this particular nut, it could, quote, maybe capture the light cone of all future value in the universe. And that for sure is not okay for, for one group of investors to have. So I'm curious to know now, if that has changed, I mean, I sort of hope not, but so much is getting dismantled in real time right now, it's unclear. Yeah. I think it's really interesting. Dan, would love to get your thoughts on that, but also some of the commentary you heard from NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Huang, last night, where he basically said that you have this rapidly evolving AI industry um, and that there, this is a world in which companies are going to build their own custom proprietary AI mm -hmm. rather than, quote, unquote, outsourcing it to someone else. I mean, coming, coming off of this wild weekend for open mm -hmm. AI, those, those comments and the context around those comments certainly cannot be denied. Yeah, and when the godfather of AI speaks with Jensen, I mean, it, it, it really speaks to not just Microsoft, but others in tech, because they're going to look to build their own chips. I think Altman now, that's going to be the next initiative in terms of going further after what NVIDIA has. They're the only game in town. And I think if you look at Apple's model in terms of what they did with Silicon, it's them really owning more of the ecosystem. And we're talking about a trillion-dollar 
opportunity over the next decade. In my opinion, it's the biggest tech transformation we've seen in 30 years. And that's why I think Jensen understands two steps ahead what's going to happen here from a chip perspective.